Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, aka Stitcherista here on YouTube. And today is a Wednesday, March 13th. So I have a day off today. And so I thought I would come on here and do a short whip and chat for you guys. I was listening again while I was getting ready this morning to another of Eddie Pinero's YouTube videos. Um, love his speeches. And in today's video, he was talking about letting success be your noise. Meaning, don't go blabbing whatever you think you're going to do to the entire world, to everybody, to Instagram, to TikTok, to YouTube, to whatever. Instead, let what you accomplish be your noise, right? And that goes back to the to the adage of what he said in a previous video, which was what you do speaks so loud, I can't hear what you're saying. Yeah, because there are many people who will talk, 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 and the stuff never comes to fruition, right? And, you know, he was also talking about competition, like competing with people. And if you look on Instagram or you look on Facebook, you know, the posts are curated for the most part, right? Like people will put their best selves on there because why wouldn't you? And the main takeaway I got from his couple minutes of talking about that was the competition is you against you. It's not you against, you know, Joe Blow down the street or Susie Homemaker on Instagram. It's you against you, meaning you be a better version of yourself than you were yesterday or the week before or the month before or whatever. And, you know, it takes courage to do that. It takes courage to operate in a society that is trying to make you into everyone else. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you know, also, and this was not from an Eddie Panera video, but I realized from reading a comment that someone left me yesterday, I think it was yesterday, that, you know, and everyone does it. Everyone makes assumptions before you know the complete story. Just by from what someone says, I mean, look, I belong to an intermittent fasting group on Facebook and a low carb group. Today and yesterday, stuff that people have posted, people have come for those people, meaning very judging when someone says I ate an apple. That's not low carb. That's not keto. Blah, 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 blah. I will die on this hill. Now, I realize that carbs are, it's like 25, 26 grams of carbs for an apple, right? I am not 50 pounds overweight because I ate too many fucking apples. I will die on that hill. Somebody will fight me because people are not overweight because they ate too much fruit. But I'm just going to stop there because... I see those posts and I just, I just scroll on by it. I, yeah. Um, okay, the comment. So I had talked about in my video, was it Monday? I don't remember. I had talked about what I got to eat at Applebee's when we went out to lunch with my stepdaughter and her boyfriend. I had gotten a cheeseburger and I didn't have the bun. And I'd gotten a side Caesar salad. So this person that commented said, you know, great for you for your weight loss, but please look at the sodium. And I think they said the sodium and fat content of a Caesar salad. And I'm going to be honest, you know, I've refrained from really being, bringing negativity onto this channel in a long, long time. And even in my life now, I really try to just, I'm neutral. I don't, um, want the negativity. And I'll admit when I read that comment, 
my hackles were raised just a tiny bit. And this is not anything against that person because everyone's also entitled to their opinion. And I probably, because of when I stated that I had the side salad, I didn't like give any more details. But I did comment back. I, I did eat the burger. And I had a side Caesar salad. So it was in a small bowl. And I want to say I probably had five bites of it. So I didn't even eat the entire salad. And yes, I'm well aware that a Caesar salad, it definitely is high in sodium because of the anchovies that are in the dressing. And it's definitely high in fat because of the dressing too. And there's Parmesan cheese on it. But when I think about what I could have gotten at Applebee's, you know, there are many and everything now in a restaurant, at least in the restaurants I've been to recently, they all list the calorie count on each item. There were items on this menu that were 1300 calories for one meal. I'm not perfect. I am by no means a perfect low carb intermittent faster, but I feel like I may, I do better every single day. I have done very well in the past two and a half months that I've been doing this. To lose 18 pounds in two and a half months, I think is fantastic. And I've even started doing exercise. Um, and I also love the people that post in these groups that talk about when someone says they made a dessert from sugar-free Cool Whip or sugar-free something. All you're doing is eating chemicals. Everything we eat is chemicals. Just about. So it's just what chemicals am I picking, right? So... Yeah, but okay, enough about that. Um, I decided to put aside the Evelyn Hugo book and I am actually, because it this other book came in on the li my library app. I have been reading First Lie Wins by Ashley, who's it by? Ashley Elston, so good. It was uh, a Reese's book club pick and it's fantastic. I read a lot yesterday because... Was I done? Yes, I was done work early yesterday. I was done by two o'clock, one o'clock. Yesterday was a short job. So I read a lot and I read last night. I am almost finished with the book. I'm about 76% through. I will link it down below. It is very good. I really, really am enjoying it. And then I don't know if I had told you, but remember I said I wanted to start reading more motivational stories on here, not so much true crime because again, the negativity, like getting it into my brain. So I am so very thankful that my library app has a lot of the chicken soup books to borrow, where I don't have to pay for books because I am really trying to cut my spending. I've cut it dramatically, and I don't want to pay for books if I don't have to, not when there are free resources out there to get books. So I checked out this morning chicken soup for the diet or soul because why not, right? And this is inspiration and humor to help you over the hump. So I thought I would come on here and read a story or two today regarding chicken soup for the diet or soul. So this very first story is just called My Weight Loss Journey. And there's a quote at the beginning by Joseph Dispenza, who is also a motivational speaker of sorts. And he says, when we move out of the familiar here and now, we set in motion a series of events that taken together bring about changes at the very root of our being. And you know, when you think about any, any change that is long lasting or that is big, it's never done. True success, I feel, is never done in these big giant leaps and bounds. It is done in little tiny steps that you take every single day. Like I think most people that look at me probably would not realize I've lost 18 pounds. 
Now you can tell it on Bill. He has lost 36 pounds. But it's probably going to take 30 or 40 pounds for someone to look at me and think, wow, you've lost weight. Yeah. Okay, so the story. There was a time in my life when everything was completely out of control. I was considered morbidly obese at 290 pounds. My marriage was horrible and I was a diet junkie, but still gaining weight on every fad that I tried. Looking back, it is still difficult for me to pinpoint how I got myself into such a rut, but it is quite easy for me to explain how I broke the cycle that kept me in the downward spiral spiral that had become my life. At 30 years old, I felt way too young to be my mother, yet there I was, weighing 290 pounds, unhappy all the time, in debt, lonely and eating for comfort. I so desperately wanted to improve my life, wanted my life to improve, and laid my hopes on the belief that once I lost weight, everything would. In an attempt to solve all of my problems, I went on every popular diet that I heard about. From the cabbage soup diet to the lesser known cantaloupe, tuna, and diet Pepsi diet. Each diet left me overweight and disillusioned, certainly not the outcome I desired. I resigned myself to the fact that I was destined to be fat, lacked any willpower, and would likely fail at any diet that I ever tried. One day in 1994, while opening the mail, I came upon an envelope without a return address. I opened it, read it, and discovered that my husband was having an affair. Oh, oh. It was like being punched in the stomach, but the pain didn't go away. An argument ensued, and I rushed out the door, needing to get away, you know, to get something to eat. I headed to the closest gas station to buy a candy bar, and there he was, the man who would facilitate my change in destiny. As I got out of my car, I gave my sweatshirt the obligatory tug, pulling it down so that I covered my butt and thus hid my fat from the world, or so I thought. As I walked toward the attendant's window to get my food fix, this man leaning on the side of the building, drinking something out of a tattered brown paper bag and wearing clothing stained with soot and grime, loudly observed, Girl, you got too much food in you. Not just a quiet observation, mind you, but very loud and heckling. Repeatedly and more loudly, my tormentor kept up his chanting. Everyone, even the attendant behind the bulletproof glass window, was laughing, laughing at my fat and me. I took my candy bar and quickly retreated to my car as he got one last comment in, Damn, girl. I was beyond humiliated. Enough was enough. Too much food in me, I'll show him, I thought, as I sped off, giving him a parting gesture as I spun my wheels like a bat out of hell. I quickly opened up my mounds bar and sought solace. Strangely, comfort wasn't to be found that night, not in the coconut and chocolate, not in the ice cream that I ate when I got home, and least of all, not when I took a good look in the mirror. He was right, and it hit me hard. He had meant to be cruel, but he was being honest and called it as he saw it. Sure, other people's comments could be construed as mean-spirited, but not this man's. He didn't make fun of me. He didn't call me fat. No, he simply stated the obvious. I had too much food in me. I took a long look at myself and at my life that night, and I realized what the problems really were. It wasn't my husband's fault that I had gotten overweight. It wasn't my parents' fault. It wasn't the teasing. It wasn't anything that anyone else did to me. It was every bite of food that went into my mouth that didn't belong there. From that day on, I quit thinking that simply losing weight would change me and improve my life. I realized that if I changed my actions in time, my life had no choice but to change. From that day on, I quit putting too much food in me. It was very easy for me to identify a few foods that I had way too much of in me. After all, I was eating at least a half gallon of ice cream a night. That seemed like a good place to start. My weight loss did not happen overnight, and my life didn't improve overnight. But rather, 
Over a series of many nights, days, weeks, and months, I made consistent small steps in the direction of a healthier life, a well-balanced life. I literally started by changing one habit, which led to changing one more habit, and so on, which wasn't overwhelming and was very doable. I gave up my ice cream vice, busted fast food, started cooking and eating with my children, stopped eating in the car or in front of the TV, and started to read labels and learn about the contents of what I was consuming. I also started getting some exercise. After I lost 15 or 20 pounds, I joined an aerobics class. After I lost about 50 pounds, I became comfortable and more confident in myself, and I started to work out more. I began taking step classes and performing muscle strengthening exercises. I started walking around the park with my children and playing with them in the playground. Over the course of the next 15 months, I lost over 130 pounds, almost exactly two pounds per week, a healthy pace by all standards. My productivity at work improved, my attitude was vastly more positive, and my life was finally pulling out of the downward spiral. Sadly, my marriage did not improve despite the fact that my body did. For so many years, I thought that losing weight would change everything in my life and my marriage. My husband was a very nice person, but together we didn't work. Each of us had different interests and desires for our lives, and it became clear that my weight loss wasn't going to change us, only how I looked. Each day is a new page in my journey, which began with a homeless man, my guardian angel, who opened my eyes, gave me a dose of reality, and shocked me into changing my life. It worked. And that story was by Julia Havey. Love that story. I'm probably really going to love these stories because, you know, in the time, I mean, there have been, I've lost 40 pounds probably three different times in my life doing Metafast. I did low carb before and I've always put it back on. It's never stuck. Um, I told Bill this time, I'm determined. It's sticking. I just, I do feel very differently this time about it. And I don't drink alcohol anymore. So that is something that is different also. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to like those stories, I think, very, very much. So I'm just going to stop with that one so I can have time to record the diamond painting part of this and get all that uploaded. But I hope you guys are all having a good day. Oh, let me tell you a little story before I end when the woman said about a guardian angel in disguise. So... Before when I did low carb, and this was many years ago, you know, I had gone like six months um, and I'd I'd lost 40 pounds in that six months, I want to say. And I hadn't eaten any fast food. I hadn't eaten any junk. I I really was um, doing really well. I wasn't doing intermittent fasting. So Bill, this was in December because I remember Bill had his work Christmas party at a local tavern by us and I was dropping him off so he could drink without abandon and then I would just come pick him up. And I had in my head, you know, I had to figure out dinner for myself and I dropped him off and I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to go to McDonald's. I haven't had anything like that in six months I'm just going to go and I'm going to enjoy like a Big Mac and fries well at the time I had dropped him off it was like rush hour it was like 5 36 o'clock so it took me a couple minutes to pull out of this um this tavern parking lot and to head home And in the meantime, I had had a Tony Robbins video playing in the car because I usually don't even listen to the radio when I'm in my car. I listen to a lot of YouTube videos. He was talking about Chris Farley and, and his drug addiction and just, I forget what he said exactly, but what he said resonated and really hit home and kind of shook me up in that moment. So much so that I bypassed McDonald's, went home, and had low-carb pasta for dinner. 
And I know I talked about it in a video because I think I titled the video The Night Tony Robbins Changed My Life or something because in that moment, whatever he had said in that video and I heard it deterred me from going to McDonald's. And that was a huge thing. That was a huge step because it's almost like wearing a rubber band on your wrist. And if you want to do something sinful or an addiction or horrible, if you snap the rubber band and like just it's like inter interrupting your brain you can probably get past that do you know what I mean and not do whatever it is that you were going to do so yeah I just wanted to tell that story because I f I feel like too that things happen for a reason and they happen in the proper time they're supposed to happen so I was meant to be deterred in traffic that night because if I wouldn't have been, I would not have heard that Tony Robbins video at that particular time and I probably would have went to McDonald's. And I would have regretted it because not eating that kind of stuff for six months, eating McDonald's probably would have wreaked havoc on my system. It would not have been good. And I, you know, you have to think long term. Like, what is that candy bar? What is that fast food? What is that going to be worth? I probably would have felt so horrible also mentally that it wouldn't have even been worth it. But okay, don't want to lecture you guys. I'm just giving my thoughts out here about this kind of stuff. So like I said, I hope you guys have all had a good week and are having a good week and you have a good Wednesday. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing. And I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.